Brett Favre is an NFL great, a Super Bowl winning quarterback with the Green Bay Packers, a pro football Hall of Famer over a two decade long NFL career. Favre was as compelling as anyone in sport as a record breaking, fastball throwing, tobacco chewing gunslinger whose unrelenting desire and thirst for the contest saw him make 321 consecutive starts and win three consecutive MVPs. But as somebody whose body took a fair old beating, Brett's passionate about improving concussion treatments and protocols in the NFL, other sports and life in general, which is why he's a sports advisory board member for Odyssey Group International, where the Melbourne-based Nucleus Network are conducting clinical trials for their innovative medication to treat concussion. Brett, good morning and welcome to SEN. Good morning, hey, thanks for having us. Isn't technology beautiful? <laughs> I can see you, and you're not frozen, Brett, which is amazing. I know. And what we're about a 24 hour flight away. Your career, Brett. I mean, it had absolutely everything. Obviously, it had Super Bowls. It had the MVPs we mentioned, the Iron Man streak. But you're certainly no stranger to setbacks, and and among those setbacks was obviously concussion. I mean, you had, as you point out, your bell rung plenty of times in your playing career, but. Why are you so passionate about this issue in, in retirement? Well, a couple of reasons. My, uh, interestingly, my last play ever as a football player, a tackle football player, was a concussion and a major one. Now, I'm not saying major concussions are worse than minor concussions but because, quite frankly, 20 minor could, could be way worse than, th- than three major concussions. And I, I'm, just, I'm just throwing that out. But it's, there's never a good time to have a concussion, certainly not, not at 40 years old and in the twilight of your career. Uh, so that, that always rings uh, loudly when I think about concussions and, and, and see stories or hear stories of former players or individuals that that have suffered concussions, but later have killed themselves, killed other people, whatever. Uh, and secondly, I have three grandsons, uh, 11, seven, and four. Now, will they play football? Who knows? One, two play baseball, one's into playing the guitar, which I'm all for. <laughs> because I know, you know, today, what we know about concussions is a great deal more than what we knew when I was their age, which we knew nothing except your bell was rung and get, get my, my dad was a football coach, get your ass back out there on the field. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the only treatment that, that was known in those times. You you would never sit out because of a concussion, but we know a lot more today and they're dangerous. They're very dangerous. And for our youth, they're extremely dangerous because their head is not developed. Um, but no one's immune to concussions and it's not going away. Rule changes have may, may be helped. I don't know that for certain, but um, it's, it's, it's kind of gotten overshadowed with this COVID stuff, but concussions are here to stay and, unless we can, we can treat them and treat them ASAP. So, Brett, they got to play hurt mentality. I mean, that was alive and well when you were playing. And I mentioned the Ironman streak. And you mentioned the Bears. That was your last game for the Vikings. And, and when you were helped to your feet, you actually famously said, or infamously said, what are the Bears doing here? Which is pretty pretty scary stuff. <laughs> How are you now symptom-wise? I mean, have you got any memory loss at this stage? How are you feeling? How are you going? Um, i I tell you what, what I've really noticed. And uh, write it off as age, whatever. Because, you know, at, growing up, everyone said, oh, at 50, you start forgetting your keys and where you put the remote control, blah, blah, blah. So I, and one side of my brain is telling me that it's just age. The other side tells me my memory has always been extremely great, which served me well playing football uh, to a certain degree. I remember plays. I was able to recall uh, play calls, uh, verbiage and, and things of that nature. Um, uh, which, which helped me, but I find that simple words are so hard to remember. And I, it's like, I have them on the tip of my tongue and I just can't, uh, I just can't get them out, you know? And then the next day the word pops up in my head, you know, um, seeing faces. There was a time where I'd see someone, 
maybe I hadn't seen in 25 years and I would remember their name right away. Now, now it's more, I remember the face, but I cannot bring the name uh, to my tongue. So again, is it just part of the aging process? Probably to a certain degree, but I think for me, the, I mean, I, there's no telling, there's no way to put a number on how many concussions I've actually had. So the repercussions I think are starting to take effect. I know with my, just the rest of my body, my hip and my back are, are giving me lots of problems uh, in the last six months. And so I got to believe that, you know, the one thing that's overlooked so often is the head. You know, how your knees, how your ankles, how's your hips? No one's, how's your head? Because that's kind of an afterthought. We still in mainstream don't think it's as serious as it is. So, uh, mm. and it, it absolutely is serious. So that's the symptoms that I see. Brett, can I ask Super Bowl 56, just a matter of days away now. And, and does retirement, has retirement brought on more nostalgia for you? I mean, you grew up in Mississippi, your father Irvin coached you, of course. Couldn't have been easy at the best of times being coached by your old man, let alone when he persisted with the wishbone, the run orientated offense. It's a it's a miracle Southern Miss spotted you at all going back all those years. Well, they, they really didn't spot me. One guy in particular who was the offensive line coach, a guy by the name of Mark McHale, a great guy, his designated area in which he recruited was my area, the Gulf Coast of Mississippi and New Orleans, uh, the South South Louisiana, South Mississippi, and the southeastern part of Alabama is what he covered from a recruiting perspective. Well, he and my dad hit it off right away. They, they drank beer together, they told stories, they were the same age, and they, they became big buddies. And so Mark obviously didn't have the final say on who they offered a scholarship to, but he went well out of his way to get it an offer. And even then it didn't happen until the night before the official signing day, he called me and said, Hey, we got an offer for you. Someone backed out. Do you want it? And that was my only offer. So it wasn't like they were, you know, they had spotted a diamond in the rough. <laughs> I don't think that that was the case anywhere. <laughs> And what, is it, what does this Super Bowl look like for you, Brett? Will you be heading out to L.A.? I'm sure you've been to plenty, but will you head out there and uh, catch the game live or are you going to stay home? Well, unfortunately, and I, I stress, unfortunately, I'm going out. Uh, <laughs> it, and and not, no disrespect to the game whatsoever. I'd much rather watch it from my living room and get up and walk outside if it's not a, not a game at all. I, but the 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 – spectacle or the circus that is has become the, the game is almost an afterthought and i i don't do well in these big crowds i would have been much better off playing in it and, and sheltered from all the zoo but i do an nfl radio show every week and one of the things that they wanted me to do from day one was to be there live for my show super bowl week so we do that friday and I, as we speak, I got messages coming in, like flight times in and out. You have to actually make a reservation. So I, I want to get out as soon as possible. The earliest I can get out is 8, eight o'clock Monday night to come back home. That's a 24-hour difference. <laughs> so, I, I, again, I'd much rather watch it from home. Jeez, he's, uh, talk, he's talking it up, JJ, isn't he? So I'm well, trying just... to get... <laughs> Halfway around the world to go to the game as a Bengals fan, and he doesn't not to want go. to go. <laughs> hey, now I'll say this about the game: uh, dear friends of my wife and I, Kent and Pam Johnston. Kent was the strength coach for the Green Bay Packers when I was there. He was the best man at my wedding. His wife Pam uh, was was uh, st- stood for Deanna, and uh, we got married. They've had four boys since. One of their boys plays for Cincinnati. He's a linebacker, Clay Johnston. He's a hell of a player. He's young. He's young. He's raw. He played at Baylor University, but he is a hell of a player. And uh, so we're really, we're going to watch Clay and I'm doing a radio show on the side. You haven't been asked about Aaron Rodgers much throughout your life and your, your career. You do got such a fascinating history of ups and downs and everything. All sorts of speculation about whether Aaron will stay or leave Green Bay. Is there an overwhelming sense 
of deja vu about this for you, looking at what Aaron's going through at the moment? Yes, very little yes, uh, and a great deal of no. Um, it happened the same year, being th- this time last year is when the, the drama began. Um, they drafted a young quarterback, no different than us drafting a young quarterback, but there's a, there's a big difference. When they drafted Jordan Love to be the heir apparent, Green Bay was coming off one of their best years in Aaron Rodgers' tenure. Uh, when we drafted Aaron Rodgers, I think we had won five games the previous year. So rebuilding was was a word you heard a little bit. Not with Aaron. I mean, 13 wins, 13 wins, 13 wins, 13 wins. It's not about rebuilding. It's about figuring out what 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 are you what what's the Achilles heel that's keeping you from winning. And I don't think drafting a quarterback was certainly the answer. But so in that respect, it's different. Why he wouldn't go back to Green Bay last year or, or even this coming season, I mean, they had it exactly the way you want it. Home field advantage, a bye. Everyone has to come play you at your place, cold, crowd. And then two, two years in a row, they, they've lost it. Uh, so, but the best opportunity, I still think, lies in Green Bay for him to go back to a Super Bowl. All right, we'll follow that story with interest. In a word, who wins this Super Bowl? I think the Rams. But I'm not a bet man, and I'm not putting money on the game. But I would be afraid to put my money against the Bengals just because of what they've done. Well, we can't wait for it, to be honest, over here on this part of the world, on the other side of the world. But for now, it's a great pleasure to catch up with you, Brett. Great to go down memory lane with you. Thanks for sharing your time. We wish you the best of luck with those trials over here at the Nucleus Network and well done on everything you're doing. Great talking with you. I really appreciate it.